This is the worst thing that could possibly have happened after that last scene. I mean, so far it's been it's been emotionally tormented Angie followed by Battler relief, but now it's emotionally tormented Beatrice followed by Angie relief. So I'm just jiving. I know you guys can't see me, but I'm just having a great time getting a character. You know, I oh, just yeah. I just read the screen and noticed that Amakusa is actually playing this music, supposedly. Hell yeah, he is! This is so exactly this is... as hopeful as I could ever hope to be. This is uh, Monochrome Clock by M. Zaki. Shout out, tired. shout out to M. Zaki. Yeah, who is not the same as Zaki. Totally different people. Different really? composers. Yeah, there's a guy called Zaki Z. Sorry, X A K I, and then there's M Zaki, which is M dot Z A K K Y. It's a bit weird. I know. I know. I will pretend people. to remember everything that you've just <laughs> said. Plus, it's a great song. And there's a remix of Higginbana. Go reading Higginbana <sighs> after this. After the end of Battle. Amakusa, could you turn that off? Whoops, my bad. You don't like him, Zaki? There he is. <laughs> I'm just not in the moon. Oh, Amakusa, turn the radio off. The world of cheery sounds was immediately sw swallowed up by the roar of the sea. I just really want to know, like, what version of reality that Amakusa comes from where people actually, like, listen to that kind of thing on the regular. Mzaki? I love Mzaki! Because, like, it's it just sounds like game music, though. I know it does! It sounds like a Mario Kart opening You don't opening listen thing. to fucking game music, my dude! You don't listen to, like, Doom soundtrack? Maybe not on a boat when you go I on feel, a, I an mean, island, but... I feel like the Doom soundtrack <laughs> is a bit divergent from... What if they just play right now? Can we play the Doom yes, soundtrack right now? Yes, here it goes. Okay, now, I'm sure it sounds really now great. Now that we've removed that, I, love, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but the waves stopped for a second there. Yeah, so it's no, like perfect. perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the boat moving through the through the waves. Uh, yeah. I mean, listen, it's a great track, and I'd probably listen to it in my own time. Yeah. But like, as I say, it sounds more like Mario Kart, like no, title screen look, music than anything else. It's okay. Else. It's it's there to make us feel really happy about everything before we get fucked up again, again. By so basically, Beatrice. what you're telling me is that that was. However long of relief, <laughs> that was it. That, that's that our was, only relief. At this that point was your in the relief. Game. We're extending oh, it. The no. witty banner, the witty talented banner. You call us witty? witty? Yes. Privately. <laughs> Privately. Privately. This is going on the internet, oh, Ben. Fuck, not the internet. Oh yeah, didn't I tell you, Ben? I've been uploading these. <laughs> oh my god. Imagine if you did that to someone. If you were like, I, I've been recording your voice and just putting it on the internet for uh, the past year. That'd be fucked up. I don't want to draw attention to certain <laughs> videos, Ben. What? But I'll shoot you a few links tonight oh to show no. you what happens. Oh no. Well, anyway, let's continue on. We have a boat to ride. It's been the world's been torn up by the, by the road of the sea. The swore sw 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 of the reef the and blotted out by the ocean's grey. I had forgotten if we actually read the first half of that. But I I'll did. Just trust I had. You. I had read it. I'm sure I had. Oh my god. It's him! <laughs> I'd forgotten about Kuwabata. How'd you forgotten? <laughs> I don't know! I'd remembered Kuwabata, oh. Kawabata, apparently. <laughs> what did I Kuwabata? For, for months <laughs> before <laughs> I even met him. <laughs> I remember this man. Him. See, I would, I, I, I would see never, com I would never commit the sin of forgetting about this man. <laughs> it's been six years since I forgot about you, Kuwabata. Kawabata, listen, ben. Kawabata. Remember, it was what? it was Kuwabata on the plane, but it's it's Kawabata here. Oh, you're for totally some right. Reason. You know what? They've had the same this character. Discussion. Whatever, it's fine. Oh, this hat. Oh, can you see it? Oh, but there's when the harbor was at the time. It was. Did it get blown up or something? <laughs> Who knows? Can you confirm it or not? An exploded harbor. I am so confident on this theory at this point, like... Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's I see just, just want to buy into... Because this is it, right? We're, we're kind of glossing over this, but we're at I the Kenjima know. in the future, which is insane. I am so excited. Uh, we've never seen it Because here's the thing is, I've been time. buying into this theory so hard. I have next to no evidence other than two hunches. Yeah, sure. Which is perfect. That's how it should be. It's blindly grabbing on a face. Uh, for those of you that haven't been following, those hunches are that everyone dies at the same time and, and that it, everyone the has same the same way. description. They prostrate themselves. Yeah. The witch or something. And um. I guess three hunches if you include the like entire visual of the scene at the end of episode two where Rose is running away from a golden cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, cloud yeah. of butterflies. Yeah. Anyway, the <laughs> captain pointed, but I couldn't really recall that scene of 12 years ago. 
I thought I'd surely be able to immediately remember how things had been at the time, but no memories came back to me. Twelve years ago! I mean, you- It was thirteen years ago, Angie! You weren't there! It's rude. After that incident, the island was sealed off and left to the wild. I couldn't satisfy myself with the thought that this was just inevitable, and it felt sad and painful for some reason. But at least I remember one thing. You might say it'd probably be the same anywhere on the sea, but I remember at least one thing. The cries of the seagulls. Oh shit. Well, that's the end of the game then. The seagulls have They've cried. They've cried. This that's is it. The We're end. done. Yeah. I we mean, can leave. Yeah. Ben, it's been a pleasure playing Ruben I've been we, released. No, it's not. Oh. We need to stop screwing around. This I've is going to take released. forever. I've been warned that these ep these videos are getting longer. It's true. I'm okay with it. <sighs> I am too, but we got to get this done. I'm enjoying it. You don't enjoy it. I do it. remember those. <laughs> I'm and enjoying I. this. When I was young, I rarely went to the ocean. So everything that symbolized the ocean meant Rakenjima in a family gathering to me. Oh. In short, it was a symbol for the happiness of going out with my family. Oh. However, at this point in time, it seems doubtful whether that was even happiness. <laughs> in my younger days, the trip had felt like a relaxed family vacation, but considering my parents' situation at the time, it was surely a very difficult trip to handle with the distribution of the inheritance, filling the, filling the place with the smell of gunpowder. <laughs> I'm so happy that this okay? was said. Yeah. I can remember giggling all over the place, completely ignorant of my parents' feelings. Kenjima, huh? The place of all beginnings, and the end of the line for all journeys. Yeah. I'm a cooser in an attempt to speak for my innermost feelings, tried to sound cool. He is cool! He's so not cool. He's the coolest. The boat slowly rounded the island. I'd hoped that viewing it at a different angle might bring back my memories of the island's silhouette at the time just a little, but in the end, even when that inlet was completely was hidden completely by cliffs, I wasn't able to remember anything. Captain, please tell me about that other harbor you mentioned. Sure! Okanjima supposedly has only one harbor, but that's only for public appearances. On the back of the island, there's another hidden harbor, like Rikenjima itself. It has a second face, which no one knows about. Damn, that's deep. Rikenjima is an island owned by the Oshimiya family, but it has another face. It's an island owned by Kinzo-san, personally. So this island has two harbors and two mansions. You sure it's been allowed just to keep a mistress. What is the other harbor, though? Is it could, just could, another could. harbor? We'll find out. Who knew about this other harbor? There are a few. Kinzo San, the butler Genja San, those of us involved with the boats, and a very small number of the older servants. Both the previous owner of the Nanjo Clinic and that Kumasawa Ba San knew. Naming them off like this makes it sound like there were quite a few, but basically there was a small number of people who knew. Please tell me about that other mansion. Well, I was only told that there was a mansion called Kuidorian. Since I wasn't allowed to leave the boat, I never saw it, not even once. So it was far enough away that you couldn't see it from the harbor. I don't know, but it was a hidden mansion after all. It was probably built where you couldn't see it from the outside. Anyway, Kuidorian was the biggest secret of the island. And yet they just told the boat dude about it. Yeah. There's a theory that Beatrice lived in Kuidorian or else was confined there. What do you think, Captain? Well, I did sometimes carry miscellaneous goods to cool Dorian, and that included a lot of stuff that only women could use, and expensive stuff at that. I'm also convinced that the theory is, cool, is true. So does that mean you never saw Beatrice directly, Captain? Nope. Came and went for about 20 years, and I never saw her once. 20 years. Who? That means she was at least 20 plus. Damn. That's like she wasn't some mademoiselle. But one day, bang, all coming and going to... To and from Kudor and suddenly stop. They're really pushing this explosion imagery, Ben. <laughs> it's a sudden event. That was about 30 years ago, so around show of 4 to 3, 968, I think. What happened around that time? It's okay, don't worry about it. Let's keep going. Sorry, I, I read that as 1986 initially, and I was like, oh yes, and then I looked back again, and it was not 1986. No, it wasn't. Okay. Odd. Oh. You might have to check some dates. How long? Okay. <laughs> Bang, you mean suddenly? We came to the hidden side on a set schedule to carry food and trash back and forth. Ah, oh, right, the hidden side is what we call the harbor linked to Kuwadorian. I get it. So then? One day, we got an urgent message from Genjisan. He said that until we heard differently, there was no need for us to go to the hidden side anymore. Did you hear differently? Not really. 
Long story short, one day I was sadly told that we wouldn't need regular service to the inside anymore and that I didn't have to take food there either. At first I thought I was being fired, but I quickly figured it out. Going by the reactions of the servants who knew of Kubador and I managed to guess somehow. Beatrice died and there was no longer any need to take food or people to care for her? Mm. That's what I think. From that point on, I was never told to take a boat to the inside. Oh, right. That's when Rosa and Beatrice had yeah, the Rosa was all, Yeah, that, I killed Beatrice. I had I'm forgotten. Surprised, I'm surprised you forgot about that scene. I'd forgotten about the date. Because like, yeah. the problem was, is I read it as 1986 and then looked back and it's like 1968. And I'm like, okay. That wasn't, that wasn't 30 years. No. Yeah, so I my, guess my, my immediate reaction was to think, oh, it's not 1986 rather than what was 1968. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, uh... Never, never oh, yeah, told yeah, yeah, to take a boat to the inside. However, after that, Kenji-san came to see me face to face and got pushy. Strongly urged me to never speak of anything related to the hidden sun until I died. So if that hidden mansion was abandoned for 20 whole years, why was Aunt Ava there? Mm. That day 12 years ago, Shirmiya mm. Ava somehow escaped home alone in a hidden mansion two kilometers away from the mansion. I really don't like that word choice. What word? Escaped harm alone in a hidden mansion two kilometers away from the mansion. Yeah. It, it just feels like a sloppily written <laughs> sentence. Maybe. Why was she in a hidden mansion that had been forgotten for 20 years? Well, so on the talk shows. Even I don't have a clue what happened. Not once did I guide Ava Sand to the hidden side. I have no idea how or why she knew about it or reached Kuodorian. I wonder if it was possible to reach this, reach this hidden Kuodorian by land. If, as we heard, the forest was dense and uncultivated, I seriously doubt a well-dressed lady person be able to bush crash it. So what about by sea? Maybe there was a motorboat or something. Are you kidding? That tuned out a typhoon was awful. No way you could've used a boat. So what if there was an underground passage that we just conveniently happened to have an image for? <laughs> um, something between the mansion and Kuodorian. Wouldn't it have been a pain to have a charter boat each time he wanted to visit his mistress mistress's house? You mean a tunnel long enough to connect mansions on opposite sides of a two-kilometer island like Rikendrima? Well, I'd like to laugh at that thought, but this rich guy made a whole hidden mansion just for his mistress. Guess I can't deny the possibility. What do you think, Captain? I'm a man of the sea. I don't know about holes. But the Japanese military dug a 25-kilometer tunnel on Iwo Jima. It wouldn't surprise me if that Kinzo-san could have dug at least two kilometers. Really, there's something wrong with this island. Even now, not one of us knows a thing about it. How does one hide a harbor, Ben? I don't know. With great care, I assume. The boat reached the shore. Uh oh, what? This is what I get for leaving you in control of the space bar. Because I'm like, oh. No, what take you, it, take it. What do you, what do you think? You know, you got something okay, to okay. say. What are you going to say? Say it first. Uh, so, the current prevailing theory for me is that it's a military bunker that Kinzo has adopted rather than one he built like himself. Like himself, sure. Okay. Uh, I mean, someone has to have built it, right? Right. This is pretty extravagant. So I think it's the the reason it's hidden is because it's like a navy base. You think so? Yeah. Well, the the cool Dorian is like a navy base or something. No, 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 no. Like the hidden harbor. Ah, I see. Like that's why it would be actually hidden. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess. Um, I should mean is a a military base. I mean, I gotta tie it in with my theory somehow, I'm right? I'm just saying. And I was just like, how do you hide a base? And I'm like, oh. The military. <laughs> <laughs> they, they typically would like to keep their bases hidden. I would yeah. assume, yeah. They would have to walk a short ways to reach the mansion. Oh, wait here. The mansion's that way. The path from there back then is probably still there, but I'll bet it's covered up with plants. Make sure you don't get lost. Right, let's go. Thanks for everything, Amakusa. You wait here, too. Well, I had a feeling you'd say that. <laughs> so I'm going to ignore that and come anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just delivering something. It'll be troublesome for them if you come too. I imagine your toxin is strong. Toxin? <laughs> I'll be back soon. Today our main goal is Kudorian. After I deliver this, I'll come right back. Angie put in her knapsack, holding the flowers she would offer. Give us some space, youngin. See you soon, little lady. Your family's waiting for you. This is disturbingly intact. Yeah. I've never been on a road like this, but I had no trouble finding my way. 
If I walked straight ahead, it would probably guide me to the final destination for everything. It was true that the vegetation was incredibly thick, and I didn't pay- If I didn't pay attention, I'd lose track of the path. But the road that was left was much clearer than I'd guessed it would be. Still, that didn't change the fact that it was a bad road. Contrary to the distance shown on the map, I was forced to walk a long way. The forest was deep and dark. At the time, I'd been threatened into staying away from the forest because a witch lived there. Of course, that fear is gone now, but I feel it. Because I was me, I could feel the presence like an aura of the Golden Witch Beatrice. Here and there were massive fallen lumps of rock along with overgrown trees and ivy. And the voices of birds and bugs. Yeah, I feel it. I feel that the witch is here. Ahead, an ivy-covered construction site, fence, and warning sign stood. No entry. Tokyo Metropolis. That was written on it. Yeah, that's right. When you think Tokyo, you tend to think of a city, but Rakenjima is also located within the Tokyo Metropolis. Apologizing to the sign for my rude mistake, I climbed the fence. When I crossed the steep slope beyond that, my vision- I feel the vision rapidly expanded, and a fresh sea breeze blew through my hair. It was like the top of a little hill. Below me was a vast view of the island. I could only see desolated forest and rock walls spread out below me, and I realized that the mansion was probably somewhere around there. The steep downward slope beyond this hill had probably been caused by earth and rocks collapsing from twelve years of wind and rain. It had become a slant filled with crags that you might even call gentle cliffs, and it would be easy to tumble down, though it looked like climbing back would be pretty difficult. In any event, it seemed that proceeding any further would be impossible. If I continued any further, I wouldn't be able to return. In other words, this is the border. This place is 1986 and 1988. And it is that day and today. The boundary between this world and Nirvana. This spot is this journey's final destination, it seems. As the strong wind blew Mammon and Sakatawa's hair, they looked down from the hilltop. From here, I can't really tell. Where's the mansion? Let's get closer. Oh, you, that's impossible. We won't be able to come back. We won't be able to come back. Is that it? I see. This is 1998, and I'm the Ashurmia Anju has been left all alone. At first, this was a journey to die. But not anymore. It's become a journey to accomplish something. Yeah. So I'm sorry, you two. Though as I was back then on that day, I would have gone down that cliff without any hesitation. Come on, this is pretty lame for the skyscraper jumping Ashrumia Angie. Sorry. Man, how interesting that there is a giant hole in the ground, Ben. <laughs> I can either confirm or deny any of this. This place is as good as any. After all, you can feel the wind of that day. Is the wind really like this? Yeah, very soon they will come. Everyone. Sakataro said it as though it was completely natural. Hmm. I believed it. Dad, Mom, Oni-chan, all of my relatives and those fun servants, and Maria Oni-chan. It's me. It's Angie. I've come, come back. When I started my journey to expose the past of 12 years ago, my goal had been abstract and I hadn't understood. But now I had no doubts. This journey was induced by several thoughts and fates over twelve years. A journey to reach an end for me, Ashurmia Angie. And a journey to reach an end as the last witch of Mariage Sorcier. I came here as the last daughter of the Ashurmia family, and as the last witch. Dad, Mom Onichan, sorry. Let me greet Maria Onichan first. A strong tailwind urged me on. The tailwind took just my soul out from inside my body to the vast forest beneath me. And though from here on I couldn't see, I believed that it flew me to the mansion on that day to where everyone was, to ma where Maria Onechan was. And so, even though my body was on top of a hill, a strong wind blowing against me, my soul was now certainly dancing through that sky. The vast, vast sky of Rakenjima. Below me was the green of many trees, but I understand. I can comprehend the presences of my family and relatives and all the servants, and Maria Onechan too. I could even comprehend Maria Onechan as the witch. It was vast, more, it's more so vast than any space I'd imagined up until now. Maria Onechan, can you hear me? 
Listen. Angie called to the Maria of that day. She told her of the long journey she'd undergone, of her long delayed realization of just how much he'd wounded Maria in her youth. She understood magic, and now understood everything about the world Maria had wanted to show her. It was very warm, overflowing with love and happiness. She wanted to become even happier by sharing that world. But I trampled it. So now I finally understand everything. I understand magic. Our magic is surely very faint and fills the space beside us. But it isn't something that anyone can see with their eyes. Magic is... Yeah. I can say it clearly. Without love, it cannot be seen. Sorry, Onechan. I've already been excommunicated from the Alliance of Witches. But now I understand how wonderful it is. And I know that after the day I wounded you, Mariage Saucier was transfigured into something different from what you truly desired. Even the magic that spat anger by cursing people was probably important to Onechan in those days. Onechan's environment was sad enough to permit that. But now, those sad days are over. So, let's return Onechan's Alliance of Witches back to the original Mariage Saucier. The grimoire was in my hands before I realized it. The strong winds were rapidly blowing its pages one after another. The world had been kind in the beginning. How could you give birth to magic that would make candy fall from the sky? How could you give birth to magic that would make tomorrow's dinner cream croquette? Whatever that is. <laughs> I got no fucking clue. Sounds delicious. How could you give birth to magic that would make the weather good when you went out the next day, making your whole day fun? New spells of happiness were created one after another, coloring her world with kindness. Those days were flipped through one after another, and months began to flash by. The pages with drawings that had once been colorful gradually began to change into the color of black ink. Eerie magic circles and demon summonings, evil magic for harming people. How could you give birth to magic that would cause the class to bully the class bully to catch a cold? How could you give birth to magic that would seriously injure someone in class so they died? How could you give birth to magic that would cause a bus loaded with all the bullies to fall off a cliff? Malicious spells were created one after another, bearing the pages in her heart. As I heard Onechan, Maria Sorcier ended up like this. Onechan isn't a black evil witch. She was a white, pure, innocent, kind witch. I'll return it to how it was. I'll bring back the original Maria Onechan, the one who scattered magic to make people happy across the entire world. That's the reason I came here. I was guided by fate. Maria Onechan, can you hear me? Show yourself before me. A voice rode an even stronger wind and was sent twelve years into the past. Then the wind gradually ceased, and silence fell. Crunch, crunch. I could hear the sound of gravel being stepped on. I listened to those footsteps, surprised at this miracle. Without a doubt, those Maria Onechan's footsteps. Hey, Amakusa, what's up, my dude? <laughs> Please? Maria Onechan. Even worse! It's Kasumi. Looks like I finally found you, eh, Maria Chan? You just said Maria. Angie Chan. Proud of you. You know what? It was perfect for this tense moment for me to fuck up. I know, right? In this voice. Oh, <laughs> this is beautiful. Oh, it's all perfect. It was so predictable, but it's exactly the thing that needed to be predictable. Here we go. Before I knew it, Aunt Kasumi and her black suits, a total of seven people who didn't resemble Maria Onechan in the slightest, were standing there surrounding me. She's about to jump. I felt like my voice had been just about to reach Maria Onechan, too. Because of these guys' talks, and that magic was cut off. Angie licked her tongue at that, but Kasumi probably didn't hear it that way. Hmm. Are those flowers for your deceased family? How admirable. You're going to throw them, right? Go ahead. We'll wait that long. So what are you waiting for? But Angie could more or less guess. The way the black suits unnaturally stuck their hands into their pockets clearly brought to mind the likelihood that they had handguns. It's a deserted island. There could be no more convenient place to dispose of someone. I have absolutely no interest in the family matters of the Sumadera family. But if I die, all that wealth will go to them. Unlike me, they're probably very interested and concerned about this matter. 
Of course, it seems that if the massive amounts of stock I own suddenly go to them, it'd be pretty bad for the Ashuramiya group as well. And they're apparently having a secret feud fighting over me all by themselves. That's probably why President Okanogi gave me Amakusa as a guard. Having Amakusa wait on the boat was a regrettable mistake. And Kasumi, how long have you been waiting for this ambush? Since early morning. Thanks to that, I'm completely tired of waiting. After all, there are no cafes or dressing rooms here. No toilets either, so I guess you had to elegantly drop a load behind a tree. Oh! Sick burn. <laughs> uh. A lady with half Sumadel blood flowing through her veins will not use such filthy words. You really are Sumadel, curious child. Not a trace of grace. She grabbed me by the hair and forced my face up to hers, and then spat at me. My words might be filthy, but they're no worse than her spit. Every time you talk to me, Aunt Kasumi, it's always about Mom. Am I really that much like my mother? Yes, you are. That impertinent gaze, your mouth and nose are the same too. Freewheeling and irresponsible, you thought nothing of the long history and tradition of the Sumadera family, and selfishly flew out of the house. I'd really like to know how a nose and mouth are freewheeling and irresponsible. That's a great question. Thanks to that, my entire life has been devoted to cleaning up your mess. I guess your life really has been covered with crap. When I was slapped on the cheek, my ear was smashed and for an instant my head rang. My hair was pulled, spinning me around and I fell to the ground. And in a flash, the ground was kicked and I was struck with sand. Yes, you truly are like Nesan. That gaze, that gaze like you're mocking me somehow. Yes, I remember so many things. You're a sad person. I'll bet that since you're young, you always got compared to mom and scorned. And for your entire life, you'll never be released from that wretchedness. A little girl like you couldn't possibly understand. You see, your mother is a loser who threw everything away and ran away from the Sumadera family, right? Do you know how much, how much trouble I went through because of that loser? Any trouble you went through has nothing to do with me. Sorry, but what am I supposed to do about something that happened before I was born? When will your life begin? Never will. For all eternity, you'll always continue to be sneered at by my dead mother until you die. If only you just die. Why are you living? You little piss! You all make her some tea! <laughs> Leave it to us. You big mouth, shitty brat, let's teach you a little lesson. Black suits dashed up to me violently, grabbed me by the nape of the neck, and dragged me down. Do whatever you want to her until my break is over. Teach my cute niece her place. Madara Kasumi. When I think about it, she was a pitiable person. The outside world, women of the Sumadera family were trained to be in a position in, that's supported and deferred to men. But in actuality, strong leadership was required from them so they could manage all the common people. The role demanded of them really was a female commander, like a little reading of the word Okami. Managing the Sumadera family with all its traditions uh, was not something that could be accomplished with just an ordinary level of dignity. It was unimaginably heavy responsibility. Normally this would have been demanded of Kyrie. Kyrie had undergone that harsh training, and Kasumi as the younger sister should have been able to take it easy. No, on the contrary, she'd lived like a lazy, selfish, and affluent princess, sneering at Kyrie who had been given the heavy responsibility. However, Kyrie had suddenly been disinherited. She had refused the fiancé her parents had arranged and had gotten pregnant by her lover, Shumia Rudolph. Mm. From the Sun Madera's perspective, even though the Shurmia family held a vast fortune, it was a low-level family that had already collapsed. And to become not even a legal wife, but a mistress to the second son of that family. Normally a daughter of the main family would be shown no mercy for such dishonor. It would wrap her up in a mat, place a pole on end, and throw her into either the Pacific Ocean if the pole fell to the right, or the Sea of Japan if it fell to the left. Jesus. Sounds pleasant. Yeah, that's some uh, yuck as a shit, really. Um, I kind of assumed that was the premise of the Sumadera family. Oh, it absolutely is. I'm just, I'm just saying. It's bad. But Kyrie's punishment ended with disinheritance and unbelievably warm-hearted dis warm decision. After that, the Sumadera family began receiving favorable treatment from a section of the Ashuramiya group. There must have been some kind of backroom deal. In other words, if Kyrie 
openly left the Sumadera family under the pretense of gaining financial support from the Ishirimiya family. Kasumi had watched it happen in shock, though she even disparaged her dishonorable sister as a loser. But eventually, she realized that the heavy responsibilities Kiri had borne would be passed on to her. And then, for the first time, she saw that she'd been outwitted. Because of your mother, my life was ruined. No, you could even say she killed me once. On that day, I was killed once and thrown into a hellish life. Isn't that what you get for making light of life until then? <laughs> Don't you ever stop talking, girl! Yeah! Jesus. The black suit punched me in the gut and I doubled over. But I was quickly grabbed by the nape of the neck and made to stand up again. Kasumi cold-heartedly looked down on me, smoking a cigarette. The painful days after Kiri had left were floating through her mind. Until then, she'd been allowed to be a simple lady, freewheeling and naive. Only the older sister, Kiri, had been harshly trained, and she, the younger sister, had been able to live as nothing more than a princess. And suddenly everything got flipped over and her life came crashing down. My life, lifestyle, and the way I lived were all stolen from me. Do you know how much I was derided by those relatives who didn't know the details all because of my sister's dishonor? I detested her. I detested your mother enough to make me spit blood. Glad to hear it. Keep up the good work. Ow. Ugh. A kick landed in Angie's side as she crawled on the ground. Angie didn't stand up again. So she continued to lie there like a caterpillar as she was kicked each time she spoke up. I saw Nesan at the Oshumia group party once. She was with her husband, looking very happy and laughing. She pushed everything onto me and found happiness only for herself. So what? I was taking it out on me gonna make you happy. Will taking it out on me turn back time and change history or something? Ugh. God. <clears throat> You said something a short while ago. When will my life start? No matter how much I despise you or take out my frustrations on you, I can't turn back time. So must I keep hating my sister even though she's gone until I die? You've got to be kidding me. How long will I have to be tormented by my sister's ghost? So I thought of something. If I could accomplish one thing, I'd be able to forget all of my hatred and start over. Angie was about to lash back out at her, but stopped, because she'd be kicked again if she responded. Even if Kasumi didn't say any more, Angie had a pretty good idea what she meant. Kasumi thought that by taking revenge against Kira's daughter, Angie, she'd be able to put an end to her hatred. Talk about pushing her problems onto other people. Come on, stand up! If you like this island that much, I'll bury you deep in it. You don't want to die at your age, right? Don't you feel like saying sorry my mother caused you so much trouble or something? Who'd say something like that? Ugh. Ew, you, Angie, Angie! Angie, someone, no! You mustn't provoke them. You, you should at least make it seem like you're going along with them so you can buy some time. They often say you shouldn't throw foolish pride out with the garbage. Ooh, what about Amakusa-san? If Amakusa-san comes, I'm sure... It's no use, I can't see him. You idiot Angie-sama. Why'd you leave Amakusa behind? I didn't need Mammon to tell me. I'm seriously regretting it already. I walked a long way. The forest was very thick. I've got no doubts that signs of activity here won't reach the boat. During the time it took for Kasumi to finish casually smoking a whole cigarette. I was continuously tormented by the black suits as she had told them to. The moment I grabbed at my head, my scalp was kicked by someone at a bad angle and my he head was filled with stars. The feeling of stars flickering in this grey, twisted world was one I remembered clearly. My life was very similar to the one K Sumadera Kasumi led. After all, as the successor to the Ashurimiya family, I was tormented constantly with various kinds of bullying under the guise of education and training. Yeah, having the inside of my head filled with stars like this is a feeling I know well. I'm being reprimanded for some error in manners I seem to have made. The discussion always turned to whether I was fitting to be successor or not. On and on about the honor of the Ashurimiya family and how deep that was. 
By the time the conversation reached that point, I'd forgotten what mistake I was being blamed for in the first place. No, in fact, it was the same for Aunt Ava. After all, sometimes she'd ask herself, hmm, what was it again? But in the end, she wouldn't be able to remember and would say something like, If I'm angry, it must be your fault, Angie. The fact that your fault is what matters, so who cares if I can't remember what it was you did? There'd be some ridiculous reasoning like that and she'd keep on punishing me. Yeah. And Ava's punishment wasn't something that would continue until I learned something or acknowledged my mistake or apologized. It would continue until Aunt Ava wanted to stop. So this violence was a bit nostalgic in a way that made me want to vomit. I opened my eyes and look, there's Aunt Ava. Right next to Kasumi who is smoking a cigarette. I can see Aunt Ava almost as though the two of them are laughing together. When I think about it, even Aunt Ava's life might be a thing worthy of sympathy. The responsibility and pressure of being a member of the Ashurmia family, which she often mentioned to me, had probably caused her great pain. After all, people can't make insults that they've never been the targets of themselves. It was probably the same for Aunt Rosa as well. As the youngest child of the Honorable Ashurmia family, she must have gone through many tough times. So it was just like what Aunt Ava did to me. It's like what Sumadera Kasumi is doing now. Aunt Rosa must be the same. People tend to push the pain they're burdened with onto other people. Otherwise, they cannot escape from that pain. And so on, in eternity and perpetuity, the chain of pain and sadness doesn't end. That's why Maria Onechan's magic was so incredible. With her magic, she didn't have to bear the pain caused by Aunt Rosa. The pain was probably pushed onto her. Its weight probably tormented her. But Onechan didn't carry that burden on her own shoulders. She purified it and filled her world with happiness. So I'm sure. If Marione Chan had children in the future, she probably wouldn't have pushed the pain that had been forced onto her onto her children. That chain of pain and sadness that stretched back for who knows how long, which she couldn't understand and which she had inherited, which had been forced onto her. Marione Chan cut it with her magic. What's wrong? Got a burn to pick with me? In the past, I would have snapped back. I would have met her hatred with hatred so that they'd cancel each other out. No, nothing got cancelled out. The whole thing being forced onto me ended up right there on my shoulders. It's like how even now, even now I hate her. So now that I know of magic, I'll look at the human called Shumia Aver again. What I could see through to was a sad human form no different from me who'd lost her family and who bore deep wounds in her heart. Unable to withstand the pain of that torn heart, she was doing nothing more than howl sadly like a lion crying in pain like a child. Even if Shimia Ava was someone I should have felt compassion for. She needed someone to understand the difficulties and pains of her childhood years. Even she, who was the only survivor of the Rukenjima crime, who was faced with the curiosity of all society, who was publicly slandered and forced to have salt continually flung in the wound, had needed someone's compassion. In order to let Ava forget her pain and sadness at least a little, the Black Witch taught her magic, just like the times it had possessed Anne Rosa. It was the same magic of anger and sadness that Beatrice had taught Maria on Chan when she was mourning for her torn apart friend Sakataru. That same magic that witch had probably dwelled up inside on Aunt, uh, Aunt Rosa too. So I mustn't hate Ashurmi Ava. Maybe. Maybe I should have become her ally. As the only person in the world who could understand her. What did I say to her when I was young when she returned alive all alone? Could it be that I acted as though she'd killed my family and returned on her own? I can't believe it. An Ava who has never been more than an object and a synonym for hatred throughout my life is turning into a human I can understand. So, I can see right next to An Ava the form of the Black Witch who taught her the black magic. And Ava was crying. It was only natural. Not only was no one willing to understand the pain of losing her husband and son at once, but her only relative had insulted her, saying, Give me back my dad and mom. I can make the excuse that I was merciless because of my youth. However, to her at the time, it had probably been cruel enough to sever the last thread in her heart. 
In, um, in the following days, the talk shows and magazines publicly slandered her. The truth of her husband's business and character and even her beloved son were negated. She no longer had anything left. She could do nothing but cry and howl, trying to forget the pain and sadness, at least for a while. After all, she could only feel a tiny bit of release, and only during the time that she howled. And so the Black Witch told her how to howl. The one I hated was the Black Witch. Black magic can probably release one from that pain for an instant. However, it never lifts that weight from a person's shoulders. On the contrary, it forces that weight onto further victims. Filling the world with hatred. If only I ever knew of white magic and had a true witch nearby. Shouldn't that have been me? Didn't I learn the magic to create happiness from Maria Onechan? I taught her with that magic. Could we have built a future with a completely different relationship? Up until now, I've hated Aneva constantly. So I didn't notice the black witch beside her. Without love, it could not be seen. I didn't have any love for her. So now finally, I'll glare at the black witch, the one I truly should hate. See me? <laughs> I see you. The only one I should have hated wasn't Aunt Ava. It's you. Whoa, awesome! To think a lowly human could see a witch like me! So? You trying to say something with that glare? Do you hate me? Hate? Yeah, I do. But that's not quite it. I think you're just sad. Sad? <laughs> what are you saying? Come on, go ahead. Why you hate me as much as you want? I won't hate. Hating you means I'm doing nothing more than inheriting Aunt Ava's hatred. I'll put a stop to hatred. I'll accept Aunt Ava's pain, purify it, and throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of epiphany do you think you've had? Is your head alright? Seriously, if you'd only just give up and die. <laughs> you guys kick him more and more, okay? Not a face, though. Because it'd be boring if a pitiful, fa pitiful face got any better. Wrecked. <clears throat> the black suits persistently kick my stomach and back. As though they'd been ordered to by the black witch. My, my, are you still not suffering after all of that? You keep staring right at me. Do you hate me? I'll bet you do. Same here. <laughs> Kasumi sneered at me. For some reason, I had the feeling that she was crying behind that expression. Just like me, the pain of being forced into an unreasonable life would never ever heal. The sad lion gasping in pain from the thorn he can't get out continues to howl. Hey, Kasumi, Derek, Kasumi, take a look. Over there, it it's you as you used to be. Don't you feel better now? You used to be standing there, but now you're on this side, right? <laughs> Isn't it great? Don't you like having it all switched? Yes, it really is great. <laughs> How can you make that kind of face, Angie? Go on and cry. You want to, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course she wants to cry. Make her cry. Didn't someone make you cry back then? So make her cry too. <laughs> you too, Angie. From you just break down and cry. <laughs> <laughs> cry, Angie. I want to see your crying face. Cry and try saying, I'm sorry, Aunt Kasumi. <laughs> yeah, make her say those words. Aren't those words pitiful? Isn't being made to apologize for something that isn't your fault just the worst pain? Make her say, make her feel the same way. By doing that, you can relieve your pain. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Be a little lot more honest with yourself, okay? If only you just let your emotions run free more and more and more! The Black Witch provoked Kasumi, and Kasumi began to give herself over to that dark emotion. By turning deep sadness into an evil alcohol and forcing it down, trying to forget it for just an instant, nothing would change. 
The words Kasumi insulted me with were themselves sad. I think that was my line, but I'm glad you took my it because my throat was like, Ugh! It's okay, you need, you need a break. <laughs> and I, could, I couldn't forgive this, the Black Witch who had imposed that sadness on Kasumi. It's like weird to quickly jump into that voice. I can do it fine yeah. if I like stop for a bit and- How, how are you doing jumping between Angie and, and Ava Beatrice? How's that? How's that's, that feel? that's the rough one. Yeah. Like I, I gave Angie an easy voice intentionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd gone limp, which seemed to have stopped the black suits kicking competition. Maybe the kickers were getting tired too. Kasumi didn't order them to stop, but at some point they did. However, I was reflected in Kasumi's eyes and they burned me with flames of hatred. She'd been tempted by the witch to do that in order to relieve her own pain. Simadera Kasumi, you aren't done yet. You've got much more trampling to do, right? Can you forgive what just happened your entire life with just a little violence? I can't. I still can't forgive her with just this. Right? There's no way you can forgive her. Do it more. More of the flames of hatred. Nothing can warm you except the fires of hate. After being frozen in the snowfields of anger and sadness, the only flame that can warm you is hatred. Say it, okay? Scream it! If only you just burn yourself to ashes with the roar of hate! Wishilmia Angie! I cannot live without hating you! <laughs> I need to buy a limiter. It's <laughs> a good plan. Uh... Angie, I, I assume. Let's, let's have a look. Oh, no. No, it's one of the no. black suits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Subidori Kasumi, look at that bundle of flowers. Those flowers are for your dead family, right, Angie? Nope, it was Ava Beatrice. Uh. You fool! Oh, it's okay, you can skip that line. I am not even disappointed. <laughs> the black witch grinned at me unpleasantly, using her chin to signal to Kasumi to pick it up. Kasumi picked up the flowers I was going to offer, brought them all the way over to me, and dropped them and made a show of trampling them. Oh. Her expression was filled with hatred and a frantic quality that couldn't be explained with hatred alone. She trampled them over and over as though her sadness was reaching the bursting point. So the sound of her trampling was just sad. Oh, still not suffering yet. <laughs> then what about this? Sumidera Kasumi, use this. Oh, not that. The object the Black Witch pointed at was Maria Onechan's grimoire. Mm. Kasumi also noticed it, picked up that book which was heavier than it looked. What's this? <laughs> Why not read it? <laughs> you might fall over laughing, okay? Kasumi opened the grimoire, skimmed over the contents, and snorted derisively. That's the right word, isn't it? I read that correctly. Derisively, yeah. Close enough. Give it back, that's Onechan's. Of course, my hand couldn't reach. My stomach was once again kicked by the black suits and I doubled over. See? This book's really important to Angie, right? Gotta belittle the things that are important to her, okay? That'll work better than punching or kicking a girl like her. You know that better than anyone, don't you? Then remembering something painful, Kasumi's face twisted for an instant. But that quickly disappeared, changing into a scornful smile directed at me. <laughs> Ooh, what a creepy book. Did you write this? <laughs> Stop it, give it back. <laughs> Look at that face! A little more, a little more. Teach her the pain of having your dignity trampled. That's the only way to soften your own pain. <laughs> What's with this embarrassing book? I'll admit, I did have a little interest in fortune telling as a girl. <laughs> Unnecessary tangent. Hmm? <laughs> just... What? I'll admit I had an interest in fortune telling. Back in my day. <laughs> just why even bring that up? Anyway. I think this is still you. Oh, but isn't this going a bit too far? Magic? Ew. <laughs> You're one of those, aren't you? It's like in those cartoons where a girl says that something, something spell and transforms into a witch, right? Who likes those, don't you? <laughs> How pathetic. <laughs> Cackling, Kasumi opened to a random page and showed it to the black suits. Black suits looked too and guffawed. That sneer didn't wound me, but I couldn't forgive it. After all, that sneer was ridiculing Maria Onechan. I don't hate Kasumi, but for forcing that unhealing anger and sadness on Kasumi, I, 
Cannot forgive the Black Witch. Black Witch ain't, ain't into Aunt Waver. Ugh, Aunt Waver. Aunt Ava. Aunt Waver! <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Ava, Sumadera Kasumi, and Aunt Rosa. Tormenting them for an eternity without letting their wounds be healed. I can't forgive her. I can't forgive the Black Witch. Wow, this is just great! Magic for making candy for the sky, you say? <laughs> What's this? Sprinkle water cleansed by the sun with sugar? Seek the magic stuff in and then an incantation! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it hurts! <laughs> Black suits were also rolling around guffawing. Then grinning, the Black Witch whispered something into Kasumi's ear. After glaring at me with a grin, Kasumi took that page. And surprised nobody. She's the worst. She's the worst. I hate her. Kasumi, why? So glad you got to play her. Uh, I hate her. Uh. Kasumi grabbed the hold of that page, tore it off, crumpled it up, and threw it away. That is a messed up eye Sakataro has right there. That is... That is goofy. <laughs> so, so cruel. That was... Maria's magic! <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> How sad. It's one of the spells to summon happiness that Maria had made with Sakataro. Anyone knows that making sugar water, coloring it, leaving it by the window isn't gonna make candy fall from the sky. But after repeating that every day, one time on her way home from school, she found several pieces of candy scattered around. Oh. How happy must that miracle have made Maria on HN? Didn't she treasure that candy eating it during her night alone with Sakatao to distract herself from loneliness? That magic Maria on HN had given birth to had been torn and thrown away and it disappeared. The whole miracle of happiness that magic had given birth to had been torn and thrown away. Oh, this part's great too. Magic to make tonight's dinner cream croquettes! <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Magic to make bell peppers taste good? Yeah, that's not bad either. So stupid. What's wrong with bell peppers? She's not a fan. <laughs> tear that too. <laughs> if only you just tear it more and more and more. The brutal loud laugh the witch made Maria and Chan spells get torn out one after another. Magic of happiness was sneered at, torn and thrown away. Stop it, stop it! Don't defile Lady Maria's magic! Don't defile it with your filthy toxin! Maman cried and yelled, but she had no way of reaching Kasumi. Come on, why not defile it? Miracles of magic? Magic to bring happiness? No way, nothing like that exists! Don't you know that you can't heal pain and sadness without pushing it onto someone else? Hey, you also had those magic friend things, right? <laughs> Sumidera Kasumi opened to that page. What's this? <laughs> Magic friends, the Seven Sisters of Purgatory. Ah, what a creepy name. <laughs> it says they can fly at awesome speeds and finish off the enemy. <laughs> Hanji, if you can use this kind of magic, you will use it right now. Is Hanji about to stab a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Foolish. The page that wrote of the Seven Sisters of Purgatory was also heartlessly torn away. The page itself was just paper. It wasn't Mammon's vessel or anything. But the tearing, denying toxin burned Mammon from the inside. Mammon's face twisted from the heat and pain. Uh, are you okay, Mammon? Hold on! This much is no problem. It's not me, but Angie's someone who's in pain. However, Mammon's expression was twisted with unbearable anguish and humiliation. Stop it, Black Witch! Why are you doing something like this? Why can't you use your magic for happiness? Oh, you're a magic friend too, right? <laughs> I'll defile you too. So, Madara Kasumi, look for this guy's page too, okay? What's this one? What's with this crappy scribble of a lion? Sakutaro? What a weird name! My best friend, it says. Really? <laughs> this is your friend, a close friend. <laughs> this lion is, is it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it really is a crappy scribble. This ugly lion is totally you. I think she has something like this as a friend that assure me of Maria's kid's mind is so pathetic it's embarrassing. What a joke. She's like a moron. I feel like she'd just give up and die. Catchphrase. Huh? Ew, don't make fun of Maria. 
Stop! Stop it! Oh, I really? I don't know. You, what just you thought there. that was gonna be? You know what? You thought that was gonna be super there? I don't know what just me? happened there. I got. I jumped on the train. You were just too quickly. excited. I was too excited. It happens. Stop! Don't break it. No way! I'm not even gonna try doing sync with that shit. Oh. It was a shrill sound. The page had been filthily ripped out. The piece of Sakatara that Onichan had drawn was violently ripped in half. Oh, Look at that dumb little lion. The best lion. Best character. <laughs> you all have to, okay? <laughs> a pair of the black suits laughed vulgarly and heartlessly trampled the two halves that had been torn and thrown away. <laughs> Sakatara, hang in there. I'm not sad. I just can't stand it. I can't stand that. Maria's being made fun of and I can't do anything about it. Humans who can't see us, it's as though we don't exist. We can only interact with humans that need us. That's why we're furniture. Sakatara and Mammon supported each other. They crouched down, sobbing. I couldn't stand it either. Those who can't see how wonderful the world of magic is can't understand it. You can't explain to humans who can't understand. So it gets belittled. If you could show them it, but you can't. Because in front of humans who are filled with the magic-resisting toxin and who can't understand magic, Magic cannot be used. I really don't get it. From this delusional diary, I've got to assume that something's wrong with your head. Says the lady who tracked the fucking teenage girl out to an Delusion island, island to, have fucking to have her beaten on by Yakuza Tufts. I know, yeah. It's pretty uh, <laughs> delusional. <laughs> wrong with her head, maybe. It really is fun to take a peek into your mind, you creepy child. <laughs> Both you and Maria. And that stuffed animal in the furniture over there too, right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I could laugh. You don't have any friends, do you? You're always all alone, so stuffed animals are your friends. What a pitiable child. <laughs> don't worry, I understand. I know what it's like to live that way, so I'll accept it. You really are a pitiable child, right? <laughs> To you, it probably would look like something made by a pitiful child. That's right. A hundred people were to read on Chan's diary, and a hundred people would probably think the same thing. I used to be like that too. But you know, despite all of that, Maria on Chan summoned a world of happiness. Don't deny that magic. That happiness. Such a stubborn child you are. Very well, <clears throat> this is the last one. I'll tear apart the source of the truly foolish magic that you and Maria believed in. Somebody cursed Sir, Sumanera Kasumi, read this page, okay? Hmm, what's this colorful page? What's this? Magic to always be friends with my beloved mother. Stop it! Not that page! Aha, this magic's really simple, isn't it? It looks like even I could do it. Even I could remember an incantation this short. Shall I give it a whirl? <laughs> it really is a short incantation, isn't it? Okay, give it a try. Let's have everyone spit it out. With expressions that ridiculed it from the bottom of their hearts, the Black Witch and Kasumi tapered their mouths, and they said it aloud. Ooh. Let's keep going. Fuck! Yeah. Black Suit stared blankly, asking what the hell that was supposed to be. Then Kasumi answered, cacking cackling. This is supposed to be an incantation. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on, why didn't you guys try it too? Ugh. The black suits imitated that moaning voice making fun of it. Ooh. Ooh. That was the incantation for the magic that would let her always be friends with her beloved mother. What the hell? How stupid! If you could make family relationships better just by saying ooh, the world would always be peaceful! <laughs> Ew! A stupid moaning voice. 
Too bad it's... If you do this over and over again, people will think you're a pathetic, stupid kid. Uh. Are you a moron? <laughs> Stop it. At least don't belittle that magic. It was the day of the picnic when Maria one chan and Aunt Rosa were alone. It was written that this was one of the top five happiest, top five happiest days of her life. When a chan was singing a song she'd just learned from her mama. Her mother had been delighted. But partway through, Maria forgot the lyrics. But since she saw that her mother was so happy, she tried to sing until the very end. With ooh. Even though she'd only pretended to know the lyrics, her mother had enjoyed it a lot. After that, ooh remained as an incantation to remember that day she'd spent in fun and happiness with her mother. Of course, even though she seemed to find it funny at first, Aunt Rosa eventually tired of hearing it. And eventually started scolding on chan when she said it. But to chan it was a memory of a fun day that she'd never forget. So among the spells that Maria had created, it was the oldest and the first. Kasumi stuck her fingernails into that page too. Stop it. Don't tear it. At least spare it that page. <laughs> no way! I really want to know where Maria got this expensive glass book. <laughs> Who knows? With a shrill sound, a girl's world of happiness was erased. Happiness. Hilarious. Hilarious. There's no way this could be magic to make you happy, right? Magic is made out of anger and hatred, right? Happiness is what you call a feeling of release you get only when you've pushed all the hatred you bear onto other people. The happiness you're all talking about is phantom that doesn't show us up, up outside picture books. As Kasumi laughed her head off, she slammed the grimoire and to the ground and stepped on it. Can't stand it? Hey, you can't stand it, right? You white witches of happiness. If you can't stand it that much, why don't you show us? Show us your magic. If it exists, then you'll have to show us, right? A witch who can't use magic isn't a witch. That's why we're the real witches. You're just brats trying to escape reality with a dream. Then if I can show you magic, will you believe in Onai Chan's magic? Huh? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll believe. If you can use magic and show me, that is. Let's see it, you stupid brat! Silently, slowly, I stood up. Sensations of this cramped world, such as the pain in my body, felt truly trifling. Oh, looks like you've still got enough energy to stand up, Miss Great Witch. Ha 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 Now that you've stood up, what are you going to show us? Show us some magic! Magic exists. What? What's this kid saying? Did you guys hear that? Silence! Isn't that interesting? You people always refuse to show this power of miracles because of the magic resisting toxin. Disciple of the White Witch, Maria, let's see some magic. Do you have any clue how many humans have believed in that miracle before being betrayed? <laughs> Everyone believes, everyone is betrayed and despairs, and they learn that true magic can only be gained by the power of black witches like me! Hitting someone with your hatred is nothing more than a sin. That isn't magic. I'll show you real magic. Y you The black witch winched slightly. However, Kasumi sneered at me even more. Then let's have a look. So what kind of magic will you show us? Magic to make candy fall from the sky, or else magic to make cookies multiply. <laughs> what? <laughs> the instant I opened my eyes, a tremendous wind arose. What is this all of a sudden? Come arise, the seven sisters of purgatory. Oh, shit! What? Get ready! Oh, let's stab a casino! Ready the, the fucking thugs, let's go! There was a flash behind me, and in an instant, seven pieces of high-level furniture were gathered there. It was a power that far surpassed the magical strength I had in my prime. There's no mammon, though. It was a power that matched even Maria and Achan and Beatrice. That's right. Seven sisters of purgatory right here! Angie, Angie Samo! We said it once. As I like magical power and resolve, I couldn't use you or your sisters. This isn't some cheap emotion like wanting to get back at my bullying classmates. In order to protect Maria and each hands. No. Maria are Sociere's world. I now order you to show me the miracle of magic. 
it's impossible. No matter what you tried before such a massive toxin. The seven sisters also remembered what had happened in their classroom. They could have obeyed Angie's order. They would have. However, surrounded by the toxin that runs thick in humans, they hadn't been able to display the miracle of magic. And they remembered very well how deeply that had hurt Angie. But Angie spoke very quietly. In that case, you all believe too. Huh? Maria Sorcière was created to bring people happiness, and also to fight the Black Witch. In order to show that miracle to the foolish Black Witch, who denies the world of one of the founders, the Wish of Origins, Lady Maria, gave birth to, and in order to protect that world, believe in magic, in witches, in miracles right now. When Kasumi gave an order to the black suits, one of them took Ooh, up. Took out a gun and pointed at Angie. Patient switching. You show us magic, right? Then let's have it. Use magic to shoot this man down with a fireball or lightning or something. You get one chance. Show us before I count to three, got it? If you can't, then you best prepare yourself, okay? <laughs> shoot. What's with this kid? Hey, she's lost it. Close enough. The black suit pointing the gun laughed at Angie's detached attitude. <laughs> you serious? This girl's lost her mind. In that case, get yourself shot. If only you just die. Angie, it's impossible. You can't block bullets with magic. No, there's nothing to be afraid of. Compared to my magic, the Seven Sisters of Purgatory bullets are nothing. Uh, Angie, Sama. Mammon was perplexed by Angie's absolute trust. If she could comply, she would have. On that day as well. But because she had been unable to do anything, she had hurt Angie. Hehehe, <laughs> you brat. If you can use magic, let us have a look right now. What's wrong? We're telling you to show us magic, right? Come on, no need to hold back, okay? Boom! Show me some magic. <laughs> Black suits cheated her. But Angie simply concentrated her mind in silence. If only you just shoot. She's even telling you to try and shoot you guys. This kid's already lost her mind from fear. Bye bye, Angie Chan. Go and pretend to be a witch as much as you want in heaven. Fire! She didn't count to three though. Nah, she's a she's an unfair bad guy. Fire! Die, Angie! If you can do it, then give this magic of yours a try! The black suit cocked the gun and, sneering, pulled the trigger. The sound of gunfire rang out, and the world stopped. A red spray scattered out, and chunks of flesh flew. Uh huh? What are you doing, Mammon? Don't tell me you'd let a boorish pebble of a bullet like this reach Angie Summer. Lucifer lined up the bullet perfectly, and with a single swing, sliced it. And in the chest of the black suit who had apparently fired the gun was a hole as big as a fist. Every now and then, I get to go first. Half of Leviathan's body was covered with blood, and a cold smile was on her face. Then, slowly, the pitiful prey that she had brought down fell over. You pissed a human. Idiot, you still not believe? A master's magic power? Are you kidding me? You materialized in front of this many humans? Well, what is this? What? What? Kasumi and the rest were flustered. He certainly seemed to have fired his gun. However, it hadn't hit Angie, and why was the person who fired hurt instead? This is magic. Great job, Leviathan. I'm most on it. You foolish humans who dare oppose our master. Now is the time of judgment. Prostrate yourselves. W why? You shouldn't be able to bring magic into the world of humans. They shouldn't be able to see magic, and they shouldn't be able to be touched by magic! W why Because this is true magic. <sighs> what are you people doing? K kill! Kill! One of the black suits, who had finally come to his senses, took out his gun, raided it. Like can't allow you to disrespect of pointing a gun at... Ugh. The disrespect of pointing a gun barrel at our master, I read that so wrong. Perfect, it's okay. Die! This is the- this is the down- down spiraling episode, it's okay. These words were a requiem. The man's chest had already been pierced by Lucifer, who had become the sacred pride in an instant. Thump. With the sound of the second person falling, the black suits now realized for certain that their lives were in peril. Whoa, whoa, save me! 
The instant one of the black suits doubled over in shock and turned on his heels to escape from that place, the stake of sloth. Be thankful that your violence against the master will be repaid with this alone. Die. Up and wrecked. In his right eye, a hole as big as a walnut opened, and his head split. Belphegor was sprayed with blood, and her face twisted demonically with the joy at being able to use her full power. Uh, whoa! Who's that? Oh, who's there? Where are you? The black suits were flustered, pointing their guns in every direction, but they didn't understand what was happening. They knew that something terrifying was coming from them from somewhere, but they didn't know where. Dumbass! The enemy's right before your eyes! The wishes furniture's after you! But they couldn't see, because they didn't believe in magic, they could not see. Just as the Black Witch said, Satan was standing boldly right in front of a black suit. However, the black suit couldn't see her at all. <laughs> Did you think humans could see our forms? That they could follow us? <laughs> Stupid humans! Time to pay a full price for forgetting your awe of magic. Eek! Eek! What is this? What's going on? You can't see it, because you have no love. Impossible! Even though there are so many humans here, even though the magic-resisting toxin is everywhere, why can you manifest your magic? Who are you? A witch. But unlike you, a real one. Get fucked. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Damn it, you bitch! Rude. As though announcing his candidacy for becoming the fourth victim, one of the black suits pointed his gun at Angie. And the trigger was... Angie glared at him coldly and simply ordered... DIE! Next one, Satan. Satan of Wrath, already right here. Blockhead, you think a silver bullet could hit Angie somewhere us now? The sake of anger pierced and smashed the bullet fired by the black suit and continued straight on towards the man's face. Know your foolishness and regret it in hell. Die! With a terrible explosive sound, the upper half of the man's head was smashed. Bathed in scattered flesh and blood, Angie quietly asked one more question. Hey, Aunt Kasumi, do you still not feel like believing in magic? <laughs> there, there's no way something so ridiculous could exist! I won't accept it! There's no way magic exists! Yeah, that's right. There's no way magic exists. There's no way witches exist. Magic exists! Witches exist! You! That's right, magic exists, witches exist, and in this world filled with anger and sadness it can become the key that opens the door to the world of happiness. I won't let someone like you deny that. The key to a world of happiness lies in every person's hands. No one has any right to steal that away. You pitiful human who cannot understand this. If there had been magic in your life it would probably have turned out differently, becoming much more peaceful. When I think that in your entire life you are never able to meet with a true witch, I pity you. Eek! Kasumi let out a piercing scream. At the same time, two of the black suits came, came for me. At once, thrusting their guns at my head. Oh, fuck. Like they were trying to use me as a hostage against something their eyes couldn't see. Against the Seven Sisters of Purgatory, who had now reached the level of weapons, this was completely pointless. Damn, where are you? Keep on attacking and this bitch is dead! Show yourself! <laughs> what the hell is he saying? And his guts look so tasty, too. Angie, so i leave the next one to me. Go ahead, kill him. Thank you so much, I'm so happy. Die. Man's chest split and his guts poured out. This terrible way of dying threw the other man into a total panic. However, Asmodeus's form was already at his back, grasping his neck and smiling obscenely. What a cutie. Hey, where do you want to get pierced? <laughs> Angie, so got any ideas? The head. Certainly, my master! Damn. Die! Fucking cold. The final black suit had his head smashed for the sake of lust. As his insides scattered, he twisted and fell. In the gruesome world where six people lay in a sea of blood, witch and human confronted each other. Sumidara Kasumi, I sympathize with your sad life from the bottom of my soul. I'm willing to grant you that magic that can seal up the unfillable hole in your heart. If you can believe, that is. Don't, don't be ridiculous! I will never accept something like this! Eek! It's Kasumi. Oh. Who's scared out of a witch step backwards? She picked up a handgun that someone had dropped. And shaking, she pointed. You were right. She pointed at Angie. It's alright. I have a point. <laughs> I don't think that's any points because it could have been either. It's true. 
That's right, Kasumi. Shoot with that gun. Turn your hatred into a bullet and shoot. Eek! Eek! I'll kill you! I'll kill you! If I don't kill you, I'll never be paid back for the life I've lived! Yes, kill! Pull the trigger! Take all of the anger and pain from your shabby life until now! Pull it! Use it! <laughs> Sorry. What? <laughs> Pull the trigger! Pull the trigger! <laughs> get him! Get him! Get him real quick! I'm trying to get away! <laughs> Sorry. Use it all against her! <laughs> if you don't, you won't be released from your pain and anguish! You've only just noticed how ridiculous this voice is. <laughs> I know, it took you this I, I, long. I, I, that was the moment I chose. No, I noticed. It's just that was the point to point it out. <laughs> at the end of this very long and dramatic scene. It's like, yeah, the, 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 the fucking scene at the beginning of episode three of <laughs> <Get> Star Wars. <laughs> you into it. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> you literally photoshopped their faces on Emperor Palpatine. And, yes, and, uh, yes. <laughs> that's happening. That's happening. <laughs> Here it is, right now in the center of the screen. I can't wait to Here see it. Here it is, here it is. Do it. Do it. Do it. Stop it, Ankasumi. You mustn't listen to the Black Witch. This is a serious scene. I'll kill you. I'll kill you because of your mother. My entire life has been a vic. In that case, my magic might be able to turn that life into something bright and peaceful bit by bit starting now. If you can believe in magic and just have a change of heart, I'll be able to open the door to a new world for you. There's no such thing! The salvation she speaks of is obviously just some fairy tale! Y your life is gonna be covered with thorns until you die anyway! Let her hear that cry of agony! You can't regain anything that was lost, right, Sumidera Kasumi? Right? That's right, you might not be able to regain anything. However, I know you'll be able to create something new. So, Aunt Kasumi, throw that gun away. I might be able to teach you, a too, about a world of happiness. Eek, eek. Eek. You know, because your mother ran away, I was forced to marry her fiancé in her place. <laughs> there was a man I swore to spend my life with, and I was forced to break up with him. You think you understand how I felt when I was forced to be wed in your mother's place? I was held by a man I had barely even talked to. I wanted to kill her, but Nisa just went and died on her own. That's why I'll kill you. Otherwise, my thorn for life will never end. <laughs> From Kasumi's eyes, tears of passion dripped down. So pitiable. This person's tears were so clear and beautiful. But for that very reason, she hadn't been able to fully understand- with, sorry, withstand her sad pain. And had been given no choice but to listen to the Black Witch's temptation. So sad. In that case, I'll at least release your soul for all eternity and free you from the bonds of resentment. That might be the only bit of charity I can give right now. Die! Oshomiya! Angie! Goodbye, Aunt Kasumi. Take a long rest in a quiet world. I no longer feel anger or hatred for you. I just want to let your soul rest in peace. Kasumi's handgun spat fire. Slowly that bullet continued through a world frozen to the utmost limit. Aiming for Angie's forehead. The witch! Hmm. Mammon. Yeah, Mammon of Green, right here! Get her. Thanks. Uh-huh. Because I met you in Sakataro, I was able to understand everything. Angie! Look away, Sakataro. Mammon, release that woman. And protect the honor of Mariage Saucier. Yes! Prepare yourself, Sumide Kasumi! Even though the world was frozen, the stake of greed flashed like lightning. And it had already gotten behind Kasumi. If there's any virtue in you, we'll meet again on the mountain of purgatory. Die! The upper half of Sumidera Kasumi's head was smashed. Her cage of flesh was shattered, and she was finally released. Holy crap. Next is you, the Black Witch. And now I think even the fact you look like Aunt Ava is inexcusable to her. <laughs> If my form still looks like a Shumia Ava, that means you still haven't been able to forgive me inside yourself. I understand, Angie. Even you want to be released from your thorn-filled life more than anything. In that case, I thought of something interesting. I'll show you magic as well. I won't be the one to kill you. With the worst of smiles on her face, the Black Witch changed her form into something like a black mist. Or else a vast swarm of black flying insects which began to swirl around me. And that black mist began to gather bit by bit, shaping itself into the form of a human. 
What's this supposed to be? <laughs> you got at least a vague idea, don't you? It's the woman you hated and despised the most. The woman who hated and despised you the most. It's uh, <laughs> how did you know what guess? Who's it, who's it gonna be? I don't know. Um, who could it be? Uh, there, are, there are at least it's one people. Nancy. Ah, fuck! You called it. But it was it was Ava. Oh, uh, you thought it was Nancy, but shit. it was me, Ava. Get fucked. Fucking Scooby Doo esque scene. <laughs> no, that's not what that was a reference to. That was fucking. I know. JoJo's. I but know. Yes, very Scooby Doo. Pull the mask off. The black mist cleared over there was on Ava's form as she'd been during her life. Oh fuck. Her hands were holding a gun. And Ava died. <laughs> I nearly said giggle. I nearly said it. I know. I feel you. Oh, that hurt. That hurt to even do. Long time no see, Angie. I've come back from hell to kill you. Oh fuck. <laughs> That's pretty intense. And Ava glared at me with a mad laugh. But I'm not that surprised. And Ava was that kind of person. I imagine my funeral came as quite a relief to you, right? That was not the right voice. No. I believe Fuck. in you. It's been. It, I've been doing. I know. The you've wrong been Ava. doing uh, Witch Beatrice, but. Oh I my mean, god. Witch Ava. Fuck me. <laughs> I imagine my funeral came as quite a relief to you, right? I felt the same since I never have to see your face again. Yeah, that sounds good. But I had just one regret. And this is it. Killing me? Was that your last request? You are fucking jamming out. <laughs> it's great! Oh. How pitiful. Even after death, my aunt wasn't released from her pain. The Black Witch's power itself is the source of my magic. Anger and hatred taught me how to work hard and persist. This is so wrong, I can't... I okay. can't do it. I believe in you. Uh, just don't do Rosa and we'll be fine. Completely different from this magic <laughs> to escape reality that you speak of. Nah. I gotta just, I gotta just, I gotta stop for a sec. Okay. I've been doing the high voice for so long that my, like, voice is just naturally <laughs> inclining. It just, just sliding up. I feel you, I have a lot of voices and I'm like, this is- I'm sliding in a Rudolph, I'm sliding in a yeah. fucking Kalabata, it happens. The magic you speak of is nothing more than stress reduction throughout bursts of anger. Our magic is different. It can remake the entire world. It's a totally different class than your wicked magic. <laughs> in that case, let's tell it which is the victor right now, black or white. Ooh. You see my magic miracle reviving even after death and pointing a gun at you like this. How exactly do you intend to stop that with the miracle of white magic? I have surrounded you with the magic resisting toxin. You can't call the seven sisters anymore. That miracle just now won't occur again. Mm. Having it occur despite all that is why it's called magic. Okay, Mammon, lend me your power. Sandy about to fucking pull a sword out, please. <laughs> but Mammon didn't respond. She didn't appear. Certainly, as she'd said, the magic-resisting toxin had burned everything up like a wasteland, parched by a blazing sun. This might be a little tough. It's useless to call out. Never again. The Seven Sisters of Purgatory will never answer. And? Being able to call them even so is what makes it magic, right? How pitiful. So long, Angie. The few days we spent together were fun in their own way. This is goodbye. Aren't you glad that the end of the line for you turned out to be this place? Yeah, seriously. How thoughtful of you. Thanks. And this is farewell. The barrel of the gun rose slowly so that you could see all the way down it. Then, the trigger was slowly... not pulled because... something else happened. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what it could be. We should talk about this scene after. Oh, fuck! At that moment, the gun exploded. It wasn't that it fired, it burst. Y you're kidding me! In a shock, frozen in a frozen space, Ava looked at the ruptured gun. When time melted, the fragments would probably smash into her face all at once. Mammon of Greed, right here! You're kidding me. <laughs> Behind Ava's back, Mammon stood. She'd already penetrated the target I had given her, which was the gun. Is this enough magic for you, Aunt Ava? Uh, uh, Angie! Then time melted. The fragments of the burst gun and exploding gunpowder burned her face. Letting out a shrill scream, she covered her face and rolled around. It was pitiful. Your luck was bad. This is game over, Aunt Ava. I signaled to Mammon, so that Ava would be freed quickly from the pain of her burnt face as she writhed around. Thank you, Mammon. 
This time I want to apologize again and from the bottom of my heart for calling all of you powerless in that day in the classroom. You were ex excellent furniture for protecting witches. <laughs> I'm the one that's grateful. I feel truly honored at being able to meet a good witch, a good master in the end, and being able to fulfill my duty as furniture. Mammon had understood. This would be the final job I'd give her. Mammon quietly walked up to me, and she looked down at Ava. And Ava, thanks for sticking with me for so long. This is farewell. Have a nice dream. See you in hell. Cool. Ava. I figured, but like... What? <laughs> yeah. And the light sound of a forehead being bored into rang out. Battle of gunpowder, smoke, and fury of white and black magic ended. I get the feeling it was a long, truly a long journey. The world slowly sank into darkness. Fuck. That's not the title. That's not the screen I was expecting. I know you were expecting a chapter end, and this we're just. I wasn't here. expecting a chapter end, but I oh. definitely wasn't expecting city skyline. Well, yeah, we're we're here. I mean, this fucking tight track. I love this track so Rhythm much. Rhythm something or other. I don't remember. It's great. This, this is you, by the way. I know. The stars that should have been sparkling lay not in the sky, but were scattered beneath me. When I realized the pearl and ruby made it red and white stream, I noticed that it was a vast nighttime scene spread out below. I was in the sky of that nighttime scene, neither standing nor flying, but simply floating. From nowhere in particular, I could hear a clap, <laughs> clap, clap. Really dull applause. I know. It's the one who ordered me to go on a journey, Burncastle. Congratulations, Endless Witch Angie Beatrice. At the end of your travels, you understood everything about magic. Yeah, I now understand everything about magic. I am a witch, the last witch who inherited the magical world created by Mariage Sorcier. No one besides you can tear Beatrice's world to pieces. Yeah, fuck you, Batlaw. Because I know witches, I learn how to resist them. Mm. Magic is made of love and sadness and anger. No matter how cruel a wish Beatrice might have been, the source of her magic is exactly the same. And that's why I wish I could leave that world of hers alone. After all, in her eyes at least, that world is complete. But then you'd have to give up on your family. That's right. So I don't like doing it, but I have to fight. The very reason I left on this journey to become a witch so I could bet on the faint chance that I'd be able to take my family back someday. Unless you kill Beatrice, only worlds of isolation can exist for you. As one who has traveled to billions of fragments, I guarantee it. I understand. I can't afford to have compassion. I must make my heart a demon, and tear her to pieces. It's good that you're steady in that resolve. I was worried that, as another witch like her, you might grow attached and lose your will to continue. I felt a bit hollow hearing that from a person whose face was almost always expressionless. Burncastle, the mysterious witch who invited me on this journey. At times I've suspected you might have lied to me. Why? I am the Angie of 1998, so even if I save my family, they will only be saved for the Angie of 1986. They won't be saved for me, so I sometimes felt like I was being deceived. That is correct. I deceived you. But now I'm grateful. After all, in the end you did teach me how to get my family back. I didn't teach you anything. If you know something, it's because you've reached that mental state by yourself as a witch. That mental state is different from my own. I personally cannot understand it, but if that's the truth, then congratulations. I'm not a player in this game, but at peace. You said that to me, right? Yes, I said it. Now I fully understand that role. Peace doesn't need emotions, it just has to give it its all for victory's sake. Yes, that is correct. A game requires that you each make the best possible moves, right? If your moves get destroyed by hesitation and confusion, your opponent will be confused as well. Sorry, Beatrice, but don't hate me. Sure, Mia Angie still needs her family. So I have the right to fight you so that I can take them back. And you have the responsibility to be challenged by me to a fight. So don't hate me. In exchange, if you do win in this game, I'll give you my blessing as well. Come on, let's go. 
As the peace I am, it's finally time for my true turn. Sorry, Beatrice. I won't hand on HN over to you. The fucking music stopped! Oh! oh, 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 oh. It's dear. The world whitened. It wasn't white, it was a gold color as bright as can be. Where are we? Where are we, Felix? There was the beautiful Ashumia family rose garden. However, the flowers on the roses were all gold. The nectar was also gold colored. The butterflies gathered there were also gold. There's lots of gold. This <laughs> is the Golden Land. Yeah. The promised land that the wishes of Mariage Saucier had finally been guided to. There all wishes are granted and all magic dreams are born. Have we seen that before? We've never been here. This is it. This is the Golden Land. In that garden of gold roses were two and only two witches. I appeared as an uninvited guest, making that atmosphere tremble with unrest. What was to them a wind of misfortune shook the golden roses. The incredibly beautiful scene formed by the golden rose petals scattered by the wind was clearly something not of this world. The two who had been taking a walk on a path of roses, golden roses noticed me and were surprised. Angie? Bedo, it's Angie! How did you get here? Leave us alone. I shall no longer invite anyone here. Bedo spoke coldly. She seemed like a completely different person from the boldly sneering woman she'd once been. She had closed off her heart and shut herself up in a world where she was alone with Maria Onechan. A world where she could always be alone with a friendly Maria Onechan, lecturing about magic while drinking tea. With no one to hurry them and nothing to hold them back, a world where not a single person who might hurt them existed. And yet to the world, sorry, yes, to the, uh, to the two of them it was a small perfect universe. Sorry. I can't have you shutting yourself up in here. We can't continue the game unless you come back. I said I stopped because I'm tired of it. I will not return to the game again. Beata will always be here with me. Here, we'll drink tea together and think of lots of ways to play. Oh, you can play with us too, Angie. Maria, I believe I said that mustn't happen. I am satisfied as long as I have you alone. Say that you two are satisfied as long as you have me. Yeah, thank you. The only person who needs me that much is you, Beato, so I'll be with you. Just us is enough. Maria, thank you. I am grateful. Beato held Maria tight, even creating a small warm universe between their joined arms. It was probably the birth of the smallest universe in the world. The smallest universe in the world which a pair who needed each other could give birth to. No matter how small it was, it was a complete world, but I had to tear it apart. Sorry, but I can't let it go like that. I came to smash this golden land of Mariage Saucier. Why? Why are you going to break my world? Are you saying that this world is causing anyone other than Maria and me trouble? You've left Onishan waiting all this time in a game you started and then abandoned without finishing it. If you don't return to your seat, the contest won't end for all eternity. <laughs> there is no longer a single player in that game. Paddle vanished, and I did as well coming here. That game is already over. It isn't over. You started the game, right? Take responsibility and see it through to the very end. Will you defeat Battler and give birth to the world you truly wished for? Will you be defeated and everything swallowed up by your magic released? Take responsibility until the very end. Don't, Angie. Beata will spend her time in this world, only with me for all eternity. And I don't need anything else as long as I have Beato. Here, all wishes are granted. Everything is here. This golden land is made up of nothing more than the crystallization of Beatrice and Maria on Chan's thoughts. To drag Beato out of this world, I'm going to have to destroy it. I will destroy this golden land, which must be a final peaceful world in Beatrice's eyes. On Chan, that's wrong. This golden land is a liar. You won't grant one wish you truly want granted. That's not true! Anything can be granted here! Look, there's even a nice mama here! Gold butterflies gathered behind Maria, forming into a kindly smiling Aunt Rosa. After smiling sweetly at me, it became golden petals and crumbled. Here, anything can be created. Even Angie, even Bella, even George and Nichan, even Jessica and Nichan. You can summon as many as you want and everyone is nice. You can come too. You come too, Angie, and let's play together. Sorry, Onechan. What about Sakataro? 
On hearing Sakatara's name, Onei-chan looked like she was choking. Stop it! Do not speak that name! Beto's expression changed as well, and she hugged Maria guiding her shoulders. Sakatara's name was still taboo for Onei-chan. Why can't I say it? It's the name of Maria Onei-chan's best friend. Why won't you invite that close friend to this wonderful Golden Land? Why in this Golden Land, where any wish can be granted, is Sakatara the only one you cannot summon? Th that is... <clears throat> it's alright, Maria. You don't have to remember Sakataro. Sakataro was killed by Mama! Oh shit. R.I.P. Gold. Mm. So this is supposedly the Ashuria Rose Garden. Yeah. But I don't remember there ever being a high wall or this thing. No, this is a- this is different. This is all an enclosed space. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. But weird. We should talk about the nature of magic once we get to the end of this chapter. Should we? We should. I think you can figure it out. Maria and Chan flew into a rage with a terrible expression on her face. Surprised by that voice, the butterflies throughout the garden flew up, blowing around like a typhoon of flower petals. Yeah, I know. Aunt Rosa took your precious stuffed animal Sakataro and tore him apart. Yeah! Maria's scream became a storm that violently scattered the golden petals and leaves. It's truly a storm of gold. Stop! Stop, stop, stop! Why are you trying to reopen the wound in Maria's heart? Don't defile the sleep of this precious friend to both Maria and myself! In that case, why don't you revive that precious friend for her with your magic? And I, I'd do it if I could, but that stuffed animal was an article Rosa created herself! The magical meaning of that individual object being torn apart is... Don't try to fool anyone. Why can't you revive Sakataru? There's only one answer. It's because you aren't a real witch. I, I can revive him! Uh, with my magic, I can revive him as often as I want, like this! I could even bury this garden in Sagittarius. Yeah, I'll bet you could with your magic. But Onei-chan definitely wouldn't be able to see the Sagittarius you create. You know why, right? I'll say it again. It's because you aren't a real witch. Stop it! Why do you keep saying such mean things, Angie? Beto can use a lot of magic. She's a wonderful witch! She couldn't revive just Sakataro, but she can do absolutely anything else. So I can at least do without Sakataro. No, Nechan, that's wrong. There's nothing a witch can't do. As soon as she couldn't do that, it was clear that Beatrice wasn't a real witch. Th that's wrong! It's because Sakataro's stuffed animal vessel was something Mama made specially herself, and... And that's why she can't revive him? Is Beatrice's... your magic so inconvenient? Gah... Uh, in that case, are you saying you can revive Sakataro? Uh, are you saying you can do that with your magic? I can. That was a very what? loud thump. Maria and Achan, I'll show you some real magic. I'll revive Sakataro for you. R really Even Beatrice couldn't do it, right? R really Yeah, I can. In exchange, promise me. Once I've revived Sakataro... Yes! Leave this golden land. <gasps> I, I will not permit that. This world is Maria's and mine. If Maria leaves, it will break. The minimum number of humans it takes to create a universe is two. Otherwise, that world is destroyed. Drag out the witch and shut away in the Golden Land, I'll have to destroy this world. Yeah, that's the proof you aren't a witch. A real witch can create a universe alone. The Mariar Sorcier Alliance of Witches. The very existence of this alliance proves that you aren't a witch. No, no! I won't hand Maria over! I hate you! Leave right now! Get out of here! Dragging everyone into a game of your own accord and then getting bored and chasing them out when your mood changes. How selfish can you be? Take a look, Beatrice. A new Maria on chan This is true magic. Will you really revive Sakataro? There's no way you can! This is a golden lad for Maria and me alone! There is not a single spell that an outsider like you could use! As you are now, you couldn't even create a single butterfly! Be quiet, Beato. Don't get in Angie's way. Ooh. And smack down on Beatrice. When Maria yelled, the storm suddenly stopped and the area returned to silence. 
scene as a massive number of gold petals that had been blown upwards quietly drifted down. It was fantastical as though a golden snow was falling. Maria, thinking about this unlikely, if only miracle, had unconsciously joined her hands together as though praying. Beta watched Maria do this, her heart racing. If the extremely unlikely were to happen, Maria would... This world would... But it's unthinkable. Absolutely impossible. The stuffed animal, which had been the only one in the world, was torn apart and thrown away, and not a thread remained. Reviving it was certainly and absolutely impossible. This is my golden land. A world where magic that isn't mine certainly cannot exist. I... If you think you can do it, let's see what you've got. You sure me a edgy! As Beato screamed like cry, the world lost its sound. I slowly recited the incantation for true magic. Come, try to remember, Maria's close friend, Sakataro. Try and remember what form you had. Try and remember what a lovable, stuffed animal you were. Ah, <gasps> ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. Expressions of shock rose to both of their faces. Then, pushing Beiro's elbow aside, Maria dashed forward. Kutaro! Sakataro! Then she clung to us both. It's alright. Sakataro isn't going to disappear. Ew, you! Maria, I'm home! Sakataro! Sakataro! Ooh! Ooh! Sakataro! I wanted to see you so much! It was without a doubt that stuffed animal lion, Sakataro. Its softness, its texture, its tr stitches, its everything. Maria had forgotten. But the instant she hugged that stuffed animal, it all came back to her vividly. There are you. Maria! I'm home. Sekitaro, Sekitaro! Is your body alright? Does it hurt anywhere? Even though something so horrible was done to you, are you all okay? Are you? And you revived me with magic, so I'm perfectly fine! Oh, thank goodness, thank goodness! Welcome back, Sakataro. Ooh, ooh. From now on, I'll always be with you, Maria. Together for eternity. So, don't let go of me, okay? Yeah, won't we'll let go for all eternity. Then, still hugging Sakataro, she looked up at me with tear-filled eyes. Thank you, Angie. Angie's magic is amazing. How? How can you revive Sakataro when Beta couldn't do it? Impossible! Impossible! How? How can a human other than me use magic in my golden land? This is completely impossible! A human other than me? What are you so flustered about, Beatrice? This is magic, right? <laughs> There's no way that's magic! This is my golden land! A world where magic that isn't mine certainly cannot exist! And my magic was not able to revive Sakutaro! <laughs> There's no way it could! It is a special stuffed animal, made by Rosa for her daughter's birthday, and in the entire world, the only... Uh, 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 uh. See, it's magic, right? Uh, uh, uh. I'd kind of guessed it from the beginning that Rosa just bought a Sakataro stuff thing. You think that's what happened? I think that's what happened, because she said it's the only and then choked. Um, it's like yeah, it's the only I mean, one. it's possible. With this miracle, she couldn't possibly accept. Beto understood all of my magic. She looked at Maria and Sakataro innocently frolicking around, looked at me and then fell to her knees with even her hands pressed to the ground and cried. Beatrice, this really is magic, right? It's magic, right? Beatrice! Indeed, it is magic. This is real magic. <laughs> Why could Angie use a magic that even Beato couldn't? Why? Why? Angie's amazing. Angie's an amazing witch. A real witch who's much, much more amazing than me. Yeah, that's right, Onei-chan. I am the Witch of Resurrection, Angie. There's nothing that can't be revived by me. <gasps> Amazing! Incredible! Even Beardus said that the magic of resurrection was the hardest. 
Angie's incredible. A really great, real, real great witch. That time, Maria and Sakatara's forms flashed gold, and the forms of the two became golden flower petals that crumbled away. As the two became a golden wind and swirled together, they left for some other peaceful place not here. Beto had, as promised, banished Maria from the Golden Land. Goodbye, Maria Onei-chan, and be happy forever. Don't worry, you definitely exist in, in Onei-chan's world. Uh, Onei world, too. But that isn't you. Good for you, Maria. As your close friend, I celebrate this reunion from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> On Beidou's face was a mixture of what was probably every expression a human could muster. It was joy, anger, and sadness. I know a picture like that, Ben. Yeah? <laughs> Don't you dare put it on time. I'm not, I wouldn't I dare. Would, I would fight you. That's the source of magic, isn't it? Without love, without sadness, without anger, magic cannot be seen. The ground shook, an earthquake. They gradually summoned greater and greater fissures, and began to tear Beatrice's final paradise apart. Golden butterflies fluttered about, trying to escape, but there was no way to escape too. And Beatrice was the same. The Golden Land began to crumble away. The earth crumbled downwards like a floor falling through, and Beatrice was sucked into the depths of a jet-black darkness. Then she was mercilessly slammed against a jet-black floor. It was a dimly lit smoking room. No. There was no door to exit by, and while there was a window, it let no light into Beatrice's shadowy smoking room. We're back, guys. Even though Beato was moaning from the pain of being slammed against that cold, hard floor, she shakily rose to her feet. There was a seat there, and the game table still just as it had been when she'd left it. The game board also remained in the same state that Beato had left it in. That's your seat. Sit. So, this is the only seat for me to sit in. Beto put a hand against her own seat and laughed sadly. Win or lose, that's all you've been given. A tie during the process of reaching that point will probably be permitted. However, you won't be allowed to suspend the game and throw it away. Will you win and survive, or lose and disappear? Till one of those two things happen, you will not be permitted to rise from that chair. That should be your only duty, as host of a witch's game, and as the Golden Witch Beatrice. Laughing weakly, Beto sat in that seat. Then she rested her elbows and covered her face with both hands, showing off a smile with nothing but her mouth. Not, not permitted to escape an unwinnable game. Then, very well. Why don't I repeat this until I die? I think it said until I win or lose. Uh, well, we could check, but you you hit space while waiting. I did. I am in fact trying to make sure that uh, until I lose. we don't have to leave. Hmm. <laughs> Quit being so faint-hearted. Win. Use the best moves you have. You started this game. You have a duty to make the best moves possible. Give all that indecisive fooling around a rest. At that time, there was a violent sound. Beto felt a cold, pathetic sensation on her leg. Mm. Gotcha! I finally got you, hey, Beto. No, oh, great lady Lambda Delta, is it? <laughs> to think that you were still here. Beto's foot was caught in an ice-cold steel shackle, tying her to the chair she sat in. She would no longer be able to escape from this seat. <laughs> you won't be able to escape anymore, got it? I can be more persistent than I look, surprised. <laughs> it's more surprising that you don't realize how persistent you look. You're not permitted to leave early or suspend this game. You'll fight for all eternity in order to win, okay? You don't want to lose, do you? You want a little peek at the kind of wonderful world you'll be thrown into if you lose? Don't worry, you can win because I, the great Lam Lady Lambda Delta, will be looking after you constantly until you win for all eternity. <laughs> but even if I wish to fight, there is no opponent seated from across, across from me, correct? <laughs> Jeez, what a difficult challenge. What could possibly happen? Oh, there Don't it is. Don't worry, I found Battler. What a tense m minuscule second that was. When Burncastle appeared and clapped her hands, Battler appeared from the sky and plopped into the opposite chair. Battler's eyes were slightly open, but there was no sparkle in them, almost like a doll's. Without one of the pillars that established his soul, it had fallen into the depths of darkness and had been drifting about all this time. 
We should have scattered and disappeared like mist. When Castle had managed to scrape him together, it's incredible she managed to bring him back into human form. However, even though his flesh had returned, his soul had not. It had been blown away by Beatrice after having its existence denied. It wouldn't come back easily. Battler won't run from this fight either. Not until he defeats you. Just because your chance of winning is shrinking doesn't mean you'll be permitted the inelegance of abandoning everything and running. Even he doesn't want that. Isn't that right, Ushumia Battler? Battler didn't answer. His heart was still dead. His eyes wavered slightly at the question, but he couldn't answer. Battler! Get a hold of yourself! You're here! And the enemy is before your eyes! Fight! Fight to win! Adler lazily repeated that, speaking incoherently. He'd come back. The wound he bore on his soul was no small thing. That was only natural. Beatrice had woven her red. He had been denied. He had learned that the mother he'd respected was not his birth mother. And he didn't know who he was. He was not assure me a battler. Don't talk stupid. You're assure me a battler, no one else. No matter who acknowledges that or denies that, make sure you believe it yourself. After all, you're the only one who can create your own world. Don't lose the world where, the, where you're assure me a battler. Then who am I? I'm not my mom's child, right? Where was I born from? Battler asked that question as his eyes, which still hadn't regained that sparkle, stared lazily up at the ceiling. Of course, she answered right away. Yeah, that's right. Beto proclaimed it with the red truth. So I'll proclaim it too. Shirmia Battler is not a Shirmia Asimu's son. <laughs> in that case, he is not qualified to be the opponent in my game, correct? Beatrice, repeat it. Shirmia Battler is not a Shirmia Kinzo's grandchild. There it is. Thank goodness <laughs> Angie is here. Angie knows what's up. <laughs> as Beato wrinkled her forehead, a painful looking smile rose to her face. So you refuse to repeat it. Beto proclaimed two red truths. Battler is not Asimu's son. And no one except Kinzo's grandchild, Battler, is qualified to be her opponent. The following theory will allow Battler to be accepted without creating any contradictions. Here's my blue truth. Listen to it. Mm. One qualified to be Beto's opponent is Kinzo's grandchild, assure me a Battler. And whether you're Asimu's son or not isn't a problem. Thus, even if you are an Asimu's son, you can still be Kinzo's grandchild. As long as you're Rudolph's son. It's just a silly word game, wasn't it? Your blue truth is valid. Beato, your counter-argument with the red truth. If you cannot counter it with the red, Battler's qualifications as an opponent will stand unchallenged. Battler was still out of it. He still couldn't really understand what she was saying for him. But even so, his spirit was starting to come back, bit by bit. Then, who am I? Get a hold of yourself. You're sure me a Battler. Yeah, maybe Mother Asimu didn't give birth to you, but so what? It doesn't change the slightest the fact that she was mother to you, right? For example, what is Ishirmiya Angie to you? You might not share the same blood, but she's still your little sister, right? It's not about blood, it's about bonds, right? That's right. Even though we don't share the same blood, Angie's my little sister. Say it in red. Say that Angie's your little sister. Angie is my little sister. Oh, I can say it. She hugged Battler, who was still out of it and slumped in his chair, strongly from behind. So much that it hurt. I don't know why Mother Asimu wasn't your birth mother, but still up until today and even now you believe that she's your mother, right? In this world there are plenty of people without even a mother. Without even a family. Did Mother Asimu ever let you feel lonely? Never, right? Don't throw your peaceful family away so easily. Your family bonds have gotten too thin after leaving your family for six years. You have to feel those family bonds much, much more strongly. Remember. For Mother Asimu's sake as well, don't lose your love over a foolish witch's rant like this. You're right. <clears throat> Mom was always on my side. Where is this place? It's dark and I want to go home. Where's all my family? The light still hadn't returned to Battler's eyes, but tears appeared. Your little sister is waiting at home for you to come back. Even if you don't come back, she'll be all alone forever. For your little sister's sake, please win this witch's game. Angie. <clears throat> little sister. But I still don't get it. Why do I have to keep repeating this incomprehensible cool game with Biro? I've had enough. In that case, settle this game quickly and go back home. Show me a battler how long you're gonna play in a round in a place like this. The little sister's waiting for you to come home. That's right. Battler had been caught up in this strange game before he even knew it. And still, unable to understand why he was fighting. He had been constantly sucked into the witch's pace, played with and made to fight. 
That should have been his most simple and first question. Because he didn't understand that, he had lost his purpose in fighting. I swear my voice won't reach Battler's ears. Instead of a vague purpose like winning against the Witcher because he couldn't forgive her, he has to be aware of a purpose for which he must win. That's right, I want to go home to Mom and Dad and Angie. I've had enough of this place. I've had enough of wishes. I've had enough of games and murders. Enough. Enough. Battler's soul is starting to come back. But it can't quite reach. You've had enough, right? And fight so you can return to your family. Destroy Beatrice and go home. No, I've had enough of witches. Enough of Beardo, enough of everything. And I mean, you're probably just another one of the witches' allies. You'll be betrayed again at any time. You can't trust anything. You can't trust any words that aren't read. Don't bother me, don't bother me. But the soul howled. She hugged his head from behind, strong enough that it hurt. Come home quickly, Honey-chan. Don't leave me all alone. Uh huh? Who are... who are you? It's me, Angie. Dad and Mom and Onicha, no one came home. I'm so lonely. I beg you, come home quickly. Angie, you were... Angie? That's right, I'm Angie. Assure me, Angie, of a world where no one comes home. My entire family never came home from Rakenjima that day. The witch before your eyes stole away my whole family, even you, Onicha. Only you can finish her, Onicha. Finish her. And take your family back, and then come home to me. Beto did that to my family. <laughs> As she says, I will not run away or hide from it. I stole or me Angie's, Angie's family away from her. <laughs> Packer is my toy! His father and mother are both my toys! I will give them back to you! You may continue to wander all alone forever, awaiting the return of a family that will never come back! <laughs> From Angie's arms that held him, the painful, sad days that had been experienced by his lonely little sister flowed into Battler. Because he'd been playing around in a place like this, his little sister had been left all by herself, had been forced to endure all that pain. Angie. Angie, damn. What am I doing? <sighs> Thanks, Angie. Your own Ichan has been forgetting something important this whole time. Battler tried to turn around, but Angie was hanging onto his head with an incredible force, so he couldn't turn back. Was it sweat? Hot drops were splashing on the nape of Battler's neck. What they were, he knew from holding Angie's arm that clung to him, because it stained Battler's hand, his fingers red. Blood. Angie? Are you okay? Hey! It dripped and splashed. He didn't know what was going on. Bala didn't know because he couldn't turn around. But the hot drops that stained his entire back were surely blood. In order to save you, Onichen, in order to come here, there was a single rule I had to follow. This is it. Letting you, Onichen, know that I was Angie. It was so hard. If no Onichen was right before my eyes, I couldn't even say that. As long as I followed this rule, I should have been able to stay by Onichen's side for all eternity. Should have been able to play the game against the witch for eternity with Onichan. That's no good, o Onichan. You have to come back. Your sister's waiting for you at home. That person isn't me, but this way your sister will be saved. A Angie, Angie! So much blood! So much, so much. He wanted to turn around, but Angie was drip gripping his head too tightly. However, judging by the blood that was pouring out of, out and Angie's pained breathing. He realized that something seriously wrong was happening to her right now. Don't worry. I'm only a piece. You know in chess they have- wait, hmm? Angie. Oh, Angie. God damn it. Only a piece. You know in chess they have this move called a sacrifice. Sacrifice? What? Who cares about chess? No. Let's get you some first aid quickly. Let's go for a second, Angie. A sacrifice is an abandoned piece. For a tactical gain, you intentionally accept a loss and let a piece go. In chess, the ultimate goal is victory. So if you can bring your victory in the end, there's nothing wrong with sacrificing a few individual pieces. And she had coolly made a decision. She had been taught over and over again that she was a piece, not a player. In order to act like a piece and save Battler, right now, she would have to become a sacrificial piece herself. Battler had to know. His purpose in this witch's game couldn't be something as abstract as finishing off the witch. 
he had to win the game, release himself, and bring his family back home. Why? Because he had family, a little sister, who was waiting for him to come home. A being was created so that Ushiromiya Angie's voice could reach you. That's me, Angie Beatrice. I'll sacrifice the peace I am to give you the will to fight. Give you purpose. My purpose isn't to play with you in a witch's game for all eternity. I came to bring Ushiromiya Angie's mourning and sadness. That is my unshakable purpose. A Angie, Angie! Ugh. The white thin arm that held Battler became pale and transparent, almost like wax. And even so, the fresh blood stained it so cruelly. I'll disappear now, but Oni-chan, fight with all you've got and I'm sure you'll come back to me. I'll be waiting, always. I planned on helping you out a lot more than this, but I couldn't do anything. Sorry. Don't worry about that. You taught me, didn't you? You taught me why I have to win. And that. I've got to win for certain and come back to you. What am I doing lazing about in a place like this? You yeah, won't play around anymore. Because I'll come back. I'll come back home. I'll definitely come home. Bring a souvenir, I promise. I don't need one. Just promise me one thing. What? I'll promise anything. In a second, I'm going to let go of this hand. It hurt, didn't it? Sorry, I held so tightly. I'm okay, so you don't have to turn around. So in the end, let me see the coolest part of you in each hand. Rise from your seat, point at the witch before your eyes, oh. and announce that the game will start up again. Oh. Well, you know I cried last time I read this, said <laughs> that he's that lion. Fucking waterfalls. And his hands slid and disappeared behind me. Her bloody fingerprints left behind, blurred by her fingernails. I turned around right away. Take care of Angie's wounds. A Angie? Angie? Oh crap, and you even promised you wouldn't turn around. Angie! Where? Behind my chair. It was as though about ten watermelons packed with blood had been smashed, then there was a sticky, pulpy mountain. Around that blood and minced meat, the clothes and shoes of Angie had been wearing. They crumpled as though they'd been taken off and thrown away. As though just the human's insides had been pulverized and tossed there like scrap. So Angie, who'd been standing there until a second ago, had been crushed. A Angie? Where's Angie? Where did Angie disappear to? Hey! Where did Angie go? Two young-looking witches said nothing, and just silently looked at the mountain of blood and meat and clothes. They didn't want to accept it. I definitely didn't want to accept it. I was right in front of you. I was watching the whole time. Watching what happened to Angie behind you. Do you know? Where did Angie go? Well, she still lived. Pinch by pinch, massive red-hot pincers tore chunks of flesh the size of a thumb of her and threw them away. I was watching. I saw as countless cruel tools, burned red-hot in the witch's furnace, approached Angie from behind, and one bit at a time peeked, pecked at her, twisted her, ripped chunks of her, and tore her to pieces. Angie should be proud. In order to share some last words with her brother, she stopped herself from gasping at that pain until the very end. So if something like that could have happened, if that mountain of flesh and clothes would have just fallen there was without a doubt what she had been wearing on her head, those pink jeweled hair ornaments. To be honest, I thought they were a bit too childish for her and didn't suit her, but... So I remembered them well. Why did Angie wear such cheap hair ornaments all the time? No. I thought that this is Angie couldn't possibly be. You're pretty blunt, Beato. Adler didn't see it, so you could have just said she'd turn into butterflies and flew away or something. You guys also saw that happen? You saw Angie get torn into little bits, you're watching, and yet you stayed calm the whole time? Without answering, Burncast the Lambda Delta and Beatrice stared at me. Some in pity, others in derision watching me. Since she called herself Gretel, and after what had happened with Virgilia in the last game, I thought she might be Beato's underling. I'd been wary of her, not trusting e her even though she was an ally. And now, after learning that it truly was Angie without even being allowed to see her face, I turn around and find something like this. Ugh. Why does it matter? All this about your little sister. What did you say? After all, you'll never return to this place for all eternity anyway. 
<laughs> Whatever happens to your little sister in a world where you don't come home has nothing to do with you. As long as you play here, the Andes of countless worlds will live in isolation, and the same pain of her final moments just now will be forced upon her, spread over a period of more than a decade. <laughs> However, that is of no importance, correct? It cannot be seen by you from here. You cannot observe it. An unobservable, observable fact it cannot be proven except by the red truth. Therefore, your anxiety over Andy's misfortune after this may be needless. She might, surprisingly, be able to live a casual life without ever having to work, thanks to Riddle's inheritance, right? <laughs> That's a lie. From Angie's arm, every part of that sad fu future world had poured into me in, into, in, in an instant. Because I kept on lazing about forever and playing in a place like this. I never thought about anyone but myself. I must defeat her. I'll take back my family, back to where Angie's waiting, and come home as soon as I can. Do it. Because even as I hang around with a witch like this, Angie's heart continues to be torn to bits by sadness. Do it. Angie, this is what you wanted to see? I turned towards the cruel witch who had indifferently spoken of Angie's brutal last moments and slowly, and with all my might, pointed. Beatrice! Indeed. Resume this game. I won't run away anymore, and I won't let you escape. Bring it on! I can no longer escape or hide. Let us decide this between you and me for good. One shall win, one shall lose, and be destroyed. No other resolution can exist. I'll win. No matter how long it takes, I'll definitely smash you. There aren't going to be any more compromises, interruptions, or losses by default in this contest. I won't run away. I won't let you get away. Try and defeat me with everything you've got. There's absolutely no need for stupid tricks, deceit, for intermingling and acting friendly. You and I are enemies. I have to settle this as soon as possible and bring my family back to Angie. Unwavering resolve. Certain willpower. The certain willpower of a human becomes certain magical power. That leads to a miracle and promises that it shall be so. Yes, this is a promised, certain miracle. My chances at victory not even one in a billion? Nor shall it be certainly impossible without any fragment of a miracle. For I knew what a cold, stiff chain had bound my other leg without a sound, tying me to the chair. All that's left is to either be killed and loosed. To oh. oh! I had forgotten that this was Beatrice talking. So that's did I. Fun. Ooh, might be worth looking over the dial again. Let's go back. Yeah, let's do that because this is pretty important. I feel. Um. Yeah. Go up one more. Can we go up one more? Oh, so this is all Beatrice talking. I can I go through these lines again as Beatrice? Would you mind? Uh, sure. Just we're already two more. hours in. A it's few fine. minutes won't it's fine. matter. It's fine. Unwaving resolve, certain willpower. The certain willpower of a human becomes certain magical power that leads to a miracle and promises that it shall be so. Yes, this is a promised certain miracle. Are my chances at victory not even one in a billion? No. Shall it be certainly impossible without any fragment of a miracle? Before I knew it, a cold, stiff chain had bound my other leg without a sound, tying me to the chair. All that's left is to either be killed and lose to battler, or resist and continue in an endless tie for all of eternity. Or perhaps I should say it's to continue tying until I've prepared my heart for death. Either way, I must fight to lose and nothing more. What? I had forgotten about this bit, but it's so fucking important! I have already been bound by the chains of eternity, and Battler won't let me escape either. Should I pathetically beg his forgiveness? Should I beg for compassion by appealing to his pitying heart? Should I forget appearances and prostrate myself? Because of the chains, even that choice will not be granted me. Check, mate. This is a perfect stranglehold. However, I am the Golden Witch. Beatrice, the demon lord of gold who reigns in the Golden Land. Even in a fight to lose, there is an attitude fitting for me, and I have the right to adorn my death in a manner suited to me. I am no different. I'll make you accept the existence of my magic, and the door to the Golden Land will open on this island. You shall become the guest of honor at that first tea party. Everyone besides you is gathered already, you see. Because the honored guest's arrival has been delayed, the tea party cannot begin. Your father, mother, cousins, and everyone else are getting tired of waiting for your arrival. Sure, that's perfect. That's just perfect. What the hell is magic? What the hell are witches? I'm done playing with you. Here we go, Beatrice. Come as hard as you can, for there will be no compromise, interruptions, or losing by default. One shall win, and one shall be destroyed. If you have no desire to lose, then you must defeat me, kill me. 
However, I won't be killed so easily. Until you can prepare for the end for me, I can resist over and over again. Can you do that? No, you probably can. You surely can. Come on. Come and kill me. Is it that hard? Then let's go with the usual. <laughs> As if I'd be killed! Even if I can't win, I can at least harass you long enough to stop you from snatching victory, right? <laughs> oh, that's a good look on your face! <laughs> Kill me, try and kill me, I'll show ya! But <laughs> Holy shit! How much of that did you catch? <laughs> A man is speechless! Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Okay. <laughs> Next time on? I guess so. Yeah. Holy shit. We, we're going to talk about that episode quite a lot. There's a lot of things to talk about. I was expecting um, the game to actually finish first. Yeah, definitely. Okay. It was a very weird ending to a chapter. But we have a tea party to attend with the Lady Beatrice and, and Battler. Next time on. Yeah. Let's do it.